Hey everyone, welcome to Friday Live. My name is Ashley Hay. I'm a mixed media artist and of course I do love playing with PowerTex. So we're taking a look at some bottle art at the moment and over the last few weeks we've been having a look at message in a bottle and then um, last week we started a bit of a quirky bird. So I'm quite excited to get back into it again this week playing with the quirky bird. I just love quirky birds. Anything quirky, I actually really, really like. So if you're out there like me and you love quirky things, then this might be something that you'd like to try. And hopefully the live today will inspire you to get cracking on your own quirky bird and have some fun because it is a lot of fun. Okay, so what we have already covered is we have already um, basically set up our bottle, we have taped it, put a runny mix of 3D flex on it. Um, after having um, created the sculptural form, how we wanted it to be with just simply masking tape, wire and alfoil. And then, uh, like I say, we painted it with the runny mix with the 3D flex. And then we did some beautiful textures. So that's essentially where we're up to. And this week, what I thought I'd talk to you and focus on is our beautiful stone art product from PowerTex. So with the stone art clay, you actually mix it with the PowerTex Ultimate Medium and it makes the most beautiful air dried clay that you can actually use to create sculptural form and really refine some beautiful details. You can also still stamp into it like we did with the Easy 3D Flex. The difference is that it's not going to crack so it will behave more like a regular clay. So if you're here, I'd love to hear from you. Just drop me a comment. Let me know where you're from and whether you've started an altered bottle for the altered bottle PowerTex altered bottle challenge, um, which of course is on the Creative Hub. We'd love to see your artwork on there. And I know some of you are starting to put some beautiful content up, which is really, really exciting. So thank you. All right, so the stone art clay, the fantastic thing with it is that it comes as a powder form and it you can mix it with any of your Powtex colours to make any different um, colours of clay, which is absolutely awesome. If you don't know how to mix the stone art because you've never done it before, I've actually created a YouTube video which shows you how to mix stone art clay and there was another video that I did on one of the Friday lives where I looked at the difference between stone art and easy 3D flex because they are both wonderful to have in your kit of mixed media stuff to play with because they both do such different things. So that's the clay in yellow. Then I've mixed it also using the red ultimate medium. So that's using the PowerTex red. We've got some blue, so using the blue PowerTex, some bronze using the bronze PowerTex, and also some ivory using the ivory PowerTex. Now, once you have a range of air dried clays, the wonderful thing with the stone art clay is that you can actually keep it for up to six months in an airtight container. So I usually wrap it in a damp um, wet wipe cloth like a uh, chucks wipe and then I um, just put some glad wrap over it like you can see here just to keep it nice and moist in that container and it will keep. So this blue clay I have actually had made up since I think about September last year and I pulled it out the container today and it is still beautifully soft and malleable. So if you're making clay up, make a decent batch of it and then that way you've always got it at hand when you're creating and you don't have to mix some. So one of the things that I could, another thing that I could do, of course, because you can make the clay in any of the different colours, all the PowerTex also actually intermixes. So I could mix the red and yellow PowerTex together to make an orange clay if I wanted to do that. 
So there are so many possibilities. And the brilliant thing is that you don't need a whole um, stack of different mediums. The fantastic thing with the Powtex Art Supplies is that you just need a couple of things um, like the 3D Flex, the Stone Art, and then some Powtex. And then you can just do so many different things with those three things. So um, it is very exciting. I know you guys out there love creating with Powtex and I know for some of you it is brand new. So welcome to everyone who's popping in now. Hello, Cheryl and Donna. Lovely to have you here. And um, we'll get cracking on what we need to do now. One of the things that I do usually like to do is I actually quite like using a dark coloured clay and then actually just embellishing. But I thought for today I'd show you making some clay in some different colours so that you could really have a play with that and um, it is a lot of fun to have the different clays on hand. So there we have it. Now before we begin I thought I'd show you um, this quirky bird. So this was actually a totem. So it's part of a totem. And so his head is more finished than the other one. So you can kind of see what's going on there. So today I'll show you how to do these um, wires and how to form a beacon, the eyes with the stone art clay. And um, we'll talk about the difference a little bit more. So a bit exciting. Um, so that you can see he's got a hole in the top. He was part of um, a whole stack of um, different things that were stacked together as a um, totem that we did for one of the craft shows when we had craft shows happening. So this one, of course, is a quirky bird that many of you will have already seen. So it is actually... Um, a YouTube video that I did quite a number of years ago um, and so if you want more details you want to have a bit more of a play with this idea not only on an altered bottle but um, as a little sculptural piece you can actually go to YouTube find this video and get the things that you need and then make him and you can make him even more even more spectacular than what I've done here. So that's something to enjoy and play with. Hey, Mariana, lovely to see you. So welcome. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at where he's at. And so I have actually um, got um, his... Um, <laughs> I've actually got his eyes painted here like you can see so they're all painted up now all I've done is they were round styrofoam balls before that had just been painted black with the rest of the sculpture so he's already getting a little bit of character to him with what's already happening there so that's just a little bit of ivory power text painted around so that he's now got a bit of an eyeball um, Oh, Natasha, lovely to see you. Thanks for popping in. It's excellent to have you here. Haven't seen you around for a while. So welcome back to the Powtex clan um, and tribe. And um, peacock feathers would just be absolutely brilliant. So they would be beautiful on some of your sculptures. And you imagine making a mass eye sculpture and having peacock feathers coming out the back. That would just be spectacular. Maybe I'll have to pinch some from you. <laughs> okay, so, um, but very, very nice. So what we want to do is we actually want to form um, some, we want to form some um, clay on his little face here and actually create more form coming over the top here so that he has got, um, I'll just see if I can get this other one in the shot so that he's got a little bit of a lip over over the top. See how that's actually got some of the clay happening over here. So that is what we're going for is a little bit of character happening there and then we'll also do something with the beak. Now you can see this other one on his eyes. It's actually done slightly differently. So you can see 
that this is actually just a ball of <laughs> this is actually just a ball of stone art clay that has been pressed on and I've pressed it on with a kebab stick. So if you want a bit of dimension, that's a nice way of actually doing it too. Alrighty, so I think for the eyelids, um, I don't want to use the brown clay because you won't see the brown clay on the black. So I think I might use maybe some yellow and maybe a little bit of blue and we'll just have a bit of a play play and have some fun and then we'll use some red for the beak so that it all stands out really really well um, so that you can see um, what I'm doing. All right so I might use a little bit of the blue to start with and so I've got some of the blue clay here and I'm just going to break it off a little bit. <coughs> Um, and so I'm just going to get that clay and I'm just really making it nice and malleable and rolling it into a little bit of a coil. So quite a fine coil. dropping it. <laughs> so Donna is just asking what the clay is that I'm using. So the clay is the stone art clay and so it comes as a powdered form Donna and you actually mix it with um, the Powtex. So you can see here I've now rolled a coil and um, I'm going to pop this onto the bird. Now to do that I'm just going to use a little bit, I'll put a bit of transparent out. I'm just going to pop that on there. And then we can just actually pop that little bit of blue down around there for a little bit of fun. And of course I can do that on the other side. So what I'm looking for is I'm looking for, um, you know, how that form's looking from different angles. And I'm just making sure that it looks like part of that sculpture and I haven't got any Powtex under there. So I'm just gonna pop a little bit more in there. The brilliant thing with this Donna is that you don't have to fire it, of course, so um, it just air dries naturally and you've got all these wonderful colours that you can put together and use. So it's just a case of using the different coloured Powtex with the stone art clay powder and you end up with a whole range of um, clays. Alrighty, so a bit of yellow now and I'll just... Again, just make that into a little bit of a ball here. So what for you guys all been making this week? Donna's saying yay. <laughs> I know, I thought you'd like that, Donna. So more to play with, more, um, more fun. So I'm just going to squash this flat now. Of course, I could use other tools like rolling pins and things like that. But I'm just going to work it with my fingers today simply for speed and um, obviously if you're working at home you can take a little bit more time to actually um, do it. So what I want to do here is again I'm making sure that I am putting a bit of Powtex onto the surface area where I want to add anything and this one will actually dry clear. So it's not going to, just ripping that a little bit. So it's a little bit smaller, made it very, very big. And then we can actually just pop that on there. Have a look at how it's looking around the other side. And we can actually form form that up however we want it. So of course if you're working at home 
um, you can use sculpture tools to actually get that to the exact um, shape that you like and just mold it and finish it off really well. Now the other wonderful thing with the stone art clay is that it is also you can still press texture into it and it stamps and has takes texture just absolutely beautifully. So I'm just cleaning all of that up a little bit and as I say if you are working and taking your time then you can make it look really, really, really gorgeous. But you can see how very quickly I've actually done that. And um, if I wanted to, I can shape this a little bit differently. Of course, I would get in under here and just make sure that it's all finished everywhere that I'm looking. Then I just want to do the other side the same. So we'll just um, quickly do another quick coil. I thought I had a bit left over here, but I must have popped it away somewhere. Does anyone else have any questions at all? Any um, exciting things that they want to share? I love hearing what you guys are creating. Um, I'd love to know what bottle art you're thinking of doing or you've started. And um, don't forget, if you haven't already joined the Powertex Australia Creative Hub to make sure that you do that and join us in there because it's a great group of, of creative people having fun. So um, you should find it a lovely inspirational community. All right, so the main thing that you do need to ensure is that you are actually um, putting your transparent power text over where you need to go look at his eyes aren't they just looking gorgeous so it doesn't matter if I get a little bit um, careless with this because like I say it is going to dry clear so it's just going to add another coat on top of that coat of power text that's already on there and then we can just take this around here as well. Use our little tool here to just smash that down a bit. Oh, did I say smash? <laughs> I mean, place it carefully. <laughs> Me, smash. Nah. Okay, then we just want to look at how he's looking. So um, are, the, are they sort of in the same sort of place, does it look good from all different angles? So from the front, from the side, how is that looking? So it's really good whenever you're working with sculptural form to really make sure that you are turning your piece around in different directions as you're working so that um, everyone can sort of, so that you can see you know, where it's working and where it's not and you can actually pick up those those bits and pieces. All right, so I've got a little bit of the yellow here. I'm just making it a little bit cleaner on the edge that I'm going to put at the front. It's looking a little bit messy, but never mind. That's okay. And it's a little bit smaller than the other one was. I think that's okay. Might just move it up just a little bit. So it's right on top of there. And then get in just with those clay tools into there. So you can see it's not quite big enough at the back there. So, you know, I might have been better to just make another piece, but the great thing is that I can easily, easily, easily just join on another bit and make it look, um, look better. So I'm just making it into a little bit of a ball. Cheryl's just saying he's starting to look sunshiny, gorgeous. He's certainly looking like he is getting a little bit of character, right? 
Now, again, I'll just pop some Powtex in there. So again, it's just using the transparent. Just gives it, when you haven't worked with the piece for a while, it just gives it that little bit more stick. Now I'm going to put some clay around the rest of his head anyway. But here I can, here I can actually see how it's got that ugly join. I can just work that in. I can use my tools and push that around and in. But I can make the shape different as, as well if I want to do that. But see how just using that tool, it's much better than using my finger. So these little sculpture tools are really, really handy. You can actually get these um, in a set on the Powertex Australia website. They're, I think they're about six ninety five for the set of um, three tools. Super handy. Or you can pick them up somewhere else, of course. All right. So because I'm going to be putting clay on here anyway, it doesn't matter that it's actually come off. Also, I can get a little bit of water if I want to and I can just wet my finger and I can also just, you know, use, use that to just smooth it off a little bit if, if it um, yeah, get in there properly if I need to. Or, of course, you could use a little bit of yellow Powtex as well, which is nice. All right. He is looking a little bit more like he's got a bit more character now. So there's some bit more quirkiness about him. And you can see in here... I want to actually uh, get in there with some more of that yellow colour. But I won't worry about that too much now. We'll just keep cracking on and I'll work on him a little bit more this week and then I'll show you where his little face got to um, next time. Hey, Donna, lovely to see you from Canada. Um, yes, absolutely. That's the benefit of all of these lives. Of course, you can... Um, you know, just pop on and watch the replay. Now, just a little tip for you. Make sure that you are wrapping your clay in your Glad Wrap when it is sitting on your work table. So you don't want it to dry out. And, of course, in the very hot Australian heat at the moment, it's going to dry out pretty quickly. So make sure that you are keeping it wrapped well and that the air is well sealed out of that clay. All right, let's take a little bit of the red and we'll move on to his lips and give him a little bit of a of beaky, beaky, peaky fun on his beak. And um, hopefully by the time his eyes are done, he'll, and he'll have a little bit more character and about him. So, um, yeah. Oh, <laughs> Cheryl's just saying he looks cool. <laughs> Starting to look more cool. <laughs> yeah, I wondered, Cheryl. Thank you. Of course, I should have known the sunglasses was cool, right? <laughs> so. Thanks, Mel. Lovely to see you on here. Now, I've just rolled a, quite a decent bit of um, stone art. And I'm just going to, because I can always add some more on, so I'm just going to make it into more of a teardrop shape and bring it down to a point. Because see how he's got quite a long nose? So I'll just bring it down a bit further until it sort of sits long enough on here. So that's looking pretty good now. I can then just flare it out a little bit here. Hee <laughs> hee. 
Fun and games, fun and games. Transparent onto here. And of course, just get in underneath as well a little bit too. I'll just move him back so you can see properly. So just get in underneath there too. Okay. <coughs> oh, excuse me. All right. So I've just sat that on there and I'm just using that form as a base really to just come around there and work that in. Now, the brilliant thing is that I don't have to get it all right the first time. I can actually um, add more, more bulk to it. I can stamp texture into it um, and I can keep forming that. So warming it up actually makes it easier to mould. Oh. We'll just get in under there, keep working it. So I would just keep working that <clears throat> until I am happy with how that's looking. He looks like he wants a little bit more to me. I've also got a palette knife which is really, really useful to use because you can also, as well as your sculpture tools, you can actually use a palette knife if you want a harder um, edge. Now, while he's like that, um, I can bring some more red colour on there and I might just do that. Or maybe I could do a little bit of yellow. Let's go for the yellow, shall we? So a bit more yellow on his snout to just pick up a little bit of um, a beaky bit there. left some of the blue out so I'm just going to pop that away follow my own tip make sure it's wrapped up thanks Donna I'm glad you love his big eyes it's a bit of bit of fun and a bit quirky and so what I'm doing is I'm just making a little bit of yellow clay and then I can just more or less shape that into the shape that I want it to be. So I'm just forming it into a bit of a triangle there and I want it to be relatively thin. I don't want it to be too fat. What do I want to do? Yeah, let's go that way. That looks better, right? And pop a little bit of transparent on there. You can see how you could just fiddle with this all day long. It is so much fun and so playful 
and um, a real joy. Now I've got a little bit of red in there. I'm just going to scoop that little bit of red. It probably came off my fingers. So yes, a lot of fun, very playful. And of course, what better way to start the year than with a bit of creative play. So I'm just going to make sure that that is following the form that I want a little bit. You can just bring that colour down around a little bit more. Push this one up. And of course, I'll be adding more colour onto his little head here anyway. So you can see here, he'll need some more colour on there. So I could go in with maybe some more of the yellow or I could go in with some red might be nice. So it picks up the beet colour. So I'm just looking at it from every angle and adjusting it until I'm happy with how it's looking from all sides. So turning him around, kind of like this side. So it's okay too. Now that we've got that, I can just make sure that I'm happy with this shape here slight adjustment and then I can actually give him some little breathing holes. So if you did him in a darker colour you um, actually can then paint the yellow onto him or the red onto him and that's a really nice way to work because then you get that dark colour in things like the nostrils. But if I want to, I can, after I've done the stone art clay, even though it's not going to make it crack, I could actually spray it with a bit of Bista and then bring it up with the yellow again. But I am loving these lovely bright clay colours, especially for something quirky. Now, just going to bring that up a little bit more so it looks like he's got a little bit of a rim happening up there like a bird would have. Tash, this will be perfect for you. All your beautiful birds on your property there. So um, Tash has an art barn in Chittering. So if you live in Perth and you're near Chittering, she's definitely someone that you want to connect with. So Donna's just asking a question. So she's just asking if you want a really smooth surface with the clay, would you rub it, rub it with Powtex to make it smooth or could you use water? Yes, absolutely. You could do a bit of both. So if you just rub it with water, you might just find it kind of releases from itself. But the Powtex will actually, yes, make it smoother and um, bring it up nicer. But remember, I'm going very fast here as well. Um, and I've got him a little bit of a distance away from me. So normally I'd be working with him more up closer so that I can really get in and really pay attention to details. But I'm just conscious, Donna, that I want to be showing you the camera angles as well so that you can see um, what's happening. But yes, you can get it really smooth and lovely um, using a little bit of water, a little bit of Powtex, whatever works. So especially in the hot weather, you know, um, like I say, everything dries very, very quickly. Now on here, I can actually um, bring it out a little bit more if I want to. I can shape it a little bit more. I can put some more red in under there. Um, so much that I can do with him now. So, so many possibilities, lots of playful, 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 fun things to to have a go with. 
And you can see how I could actually make him all with the stone art clay if I wanted to, but I will actually tie some of these colours in so I'll actually um, wipe off some of the bista using um, a damp sponge and then I can paint the colour back into, into that as well. <laughs> yeah. No worries, Donna. Okay. And... Um, so Donna was just saying, yeah, I realise that you're working quickly so that we can see what you're doing. And also so you don't get bored with me just, you know, um, plugging away here in my own little creative la-la land and, uh, you know, away I go. So what I'd quite like to do is I'd quite like to give put some more of the red clay in under here, but I can always do that later. What I will show you is... Um, I'm not sure what colour I want to do in here. Maybe some blue might be nice because then that will contrast with the um, yellow beak and also with the red. So to put some blue in here, it's going to pick up his blue eyes and then I can also press into that, give, make it look more feathery and maybe continue with maybe like a, I don't know what they're called. What are they called that birds have, especially like the chooks have under their necks? Tash, you'd know that because um, it's not a comb because the comb's the top bit. So what's that bit underneath called? Let me know if you know. <laughs> okay, so what we want to do as well is we want to make this comb look really super. So what I thought I'd do is also just show you, I'm just, I've got a little bit of yellow clay lying here, so I can either use it up or I can just put it away for later, which I might just do. So I'm just stashing it away there in my glad wrap so it doesn't dry out. And um, so what I thought I'd show you is that you can actually use some wire to create a nice comb effect. So the effect that we sort of got on this one, um, I actually had some really beautiful bright blue wire and I went to find it. I couldn't find it and I went, oh, Murphy's Law, I can't find my wire. Anyway, I've got gold. So it, gold it is. And so all I've done is I've cut a few different lengths of wire and um, you can see there that there's just lots of different lengths there so that they're not all the same. And then I can set some sort of, like I could put a in here um, in this little loopy bit that I've sort of looped over there and I could put like a bead or I could put a little bit of glass or something on there. Thank you, Tash. See, I knew you'd know. It's called Wattles. So our wattles, so we might put some wattles under his little um, neck there. All right, so back to the wire. Um, what I can do is I can take my wire and take something like a pencil and then just wind around the pencil and then pull the pencil out. And then I can kind of pull it out of shape as well. Didn't quite go down far enough the other way. Just do another twist there. One more. Okay, so it doesn't matter if it's a funny shape. The, the more quirky, the better. So... Um, you, you can see that it's all just nice and wonky. Um, so Donna, this is actually, it's coloured aluminium wire, so it is really beautiful and soft. It's a craft wire. Um, I stock the, um, I stock the natural wire, if you like. I don't have these in stock. I've just got a bit for me to play with. Um, but, yeah, with it, I think it's around about 1.75 mil thick. Okay, and then we can actually add this to his little comb there. And we can add all the bits. 
and just play with them until we're happy with the shape <laughs> because of course you can play and play and play now because I've got this comb here I can actually tape this onto the comb so that's why I put it there was so that I would actually have a bit of a form to be able to pop some wire onto the other thing that I can do because remember the head is just essentially a styrofoam ball and there's probably some alfoil and wire in here somewhere but I can get a metal skewer and I can press into here and then I can um, actually pop some wire so not only does it come off the comb bit here but it also comes out of out of the head area there as well so that would be a bit of fun so yeah the aluminium wire is absolutely gorgeous to work with Donna so let's just do I know I've got a really long one here not sure which one that is I'll just do a couple more and we'll tape those on there and uh, then we can put some clay on the comb if we want Okay, there's another one ready to go nice so it's a lot quicker when you don't have to think and talk and chat at the same time um, when you're paying attention to what you're actually doing you'll find it a lot faster and easier another one another longer one is what I want which is here <laughs> I love it once they start to get some character so has anyone got a name anyone think of a name that I should maybe call him right let's get these on so I've just got some masking tape and we'll just pop that on just wherever. Kind of liked that coming off the front as well so we might go with that put it more of an angle so it sticks that down then I'm just going to tape it on from a few different angles and don't forget that I can always adjust the wires as well I'm going to go over there make get in and make it nice and tight and firm <laughs> yeah, hilarious George I like it see this one I'd quite like it to have a little bit more twist of course I would right I want that crazy bit to be popping out over there there we go Donna's just saying she thought George too so maybe George it is that's hilarious and of course I can sort of spring them out to the sides as well once they're attached on there and I can put as many wires as I want so if I find that blue wire wouldn't it be nice to have some blue wire in there with the gold as well Eight.
going to stay right there. So who thought he was going to have a triangly head? <laughs> nope. It's going to have a spectacular comb. George would love a nice comb. Got a bit of Powtex on my fingers. I normally like to wash my hands before I do anything like this so that um, I'm not getting it every. Oh, okay. We've got no table. So, um, unfortunately, so, um, You'll just see this, so I'll try and move him so that um, you can see him a little bit better. Maybe my cat behind him. <laughs> don't know. What are we going to do? Black. Okay, that's how that's how it's looking now. And so all I will do is simply keep going with a bit of that. And um, with technical issues, I think I. I probably knocked the phone in actual fact and did something that made it go offline. Um, but never mind, these are the things that happen live. So pretty much that is just what I wanted to show you today anyway. So I hope that you have loved that. And I can adjust this and then all I was going to do was put a little bit more of the clay onto here. Um, and I'm glad you can still hear me. So, yes, we changed, flipped the audio over onto um, the other camera. So I'm sure it will be a little bit lower, but we'll be good. All right, so there we go. That is all for today. And I hope that you get into your own quirky bird. Have some fun. I love mixing the stone art clay into different colours and playing with the clay like this. And you can see how you can do amazing, absolutely amazing, colourful works of art using the stone art clay in this way. So it is absolutely gorgeous. And of course, I can still press textures and things into this as well. So it is absolutely brilliant to be able to do that too. But in this instance here, I want this to be nice and smooth because it's his eyes. But when we're doing his feathery bits, then I might use some rubbing plates or some stamps exactly the same way as I did for the easy 3D flex, except with the stone art clay, it's not going to crack. So that's the main difference. The 3D flex, easy 3D flex is brilliant because you get these absolutely amazing cracks. <laughs> And Donna's just saying, oh, he's the new West Coast Eagles mascot. Yes, he is looking very red, white and blue. So um, I love that. Maybe we'll have to talk to the Eagles. Hey, Donna. <laughs> okay, thank you so much for joining me again this week, everyone. I hope you've had a bit of quirky fun and that it's definitely inspired you for the weekend to do a little bit more, have some arty play because that's what I'm here for, is to inspire you guys to create and help you to learn a little bit more about some of the fabulous Powtex art supplies um, that you can use in your own artwork. So if you want to learn more about Powtex, of course, you can go to the website. And if you want to do something and you've got no access to any workshops near you, I've now got a whole range of um, art workshops on Ashley Hay Art Academy that you can actually purchase and you will love them because they're step by step and really easy to follow and you'll feel like I'm there with you in the studio. So there you have it everyone. Have a wonderful creative week. I'll see you next week. Next week we will take our quirky bird further and we should get him to the point where we are finished. So we'll see how we go, whether it's one more week or two. Have fun, get creative, and maybe you'd like to create a Valentine's bottle because, of course, Valentine's Day is coming up in a few weeks. So keep thinking, arty altered bottles, 
get on the job and I look forward to seeing them in the Creative Hub. Ciao everyone, bye.